In this video, I want to talk about emotional threads or how feminine or women communicate. Have you ever got um, a girl's number and she was really into you and really excited to talk to you and then she just doesn't call you back or she doesn't text you back when you text her? Have you ever been texting a girl and suddenly she disappears? And then one day she reappears suddenly and she's all invested again and then she's gone again. And then it's back and forth over and over and over again. Have you ever noticed that girls' conversation styles can be a little random? You ever been out at a bar and noticed that women tend to talk about a lot of emotional things with a lot of expression, but sometimes there's no logic to what they're saying. It's kind of all over the place. It's bouncing from one side to the other. And so I want to dive a little deeper into this and what this is, because if you understand this, it's going to make your communication with women so much better. So many guys make this mistake. See, guys, especially guys that are not good with women, tend to be a little more logical. They tend to think more logically. They set a goal, they have an intention, and they want to accomplish that intention. So they meet a beautiful woman and she says they want to meet them. They want to hang out, let's hang out sometime. And they take it seriously. She's flirting, she's flowing. They've talked for five minutes and then she's like, yeah, call me, call me. And then he's like, well, okay, she wants me to call her. I got her number, I got her digits. And then he calls her and she doesn't call back and he's all frustrated. Or how about this one? You're out having a conversation at a bar, you're flowing, you're ba everybody's laughing. You start to tell a really good story and then somebody changes the topic and everybody jumps and goes that direction and you get frustrated. You wanna go back to your story. I'm not done with it yet. That's rude. That's the logical mind screwing up the conversation that, I, that so many men have. You see, when somebody is really in their feminine and women love to go in their feminine when they're on dates, they can be in their masculine at work. They can be in their masculine at other places. When they're on dates, when they're out of bars, when they're flowing, they really wanna be in their feminine. They wanna be polarized in their feminine by masculine men. And masculine men get this. So when a woman's in her feminine, she's gonna flow. She's gonna be all over the place. She's gonna be loyal to the moment. If her best friend's talking about something sad, she might stop and feel sad with her and then tell a story when she was sad. They might be totally two different stories, but they both might have sadness. Or somebody might be telling her something important, but then somebody says something emotional over here, and that emotion is stronger than what this person's saying here, so it pulls her that way. That's the emotional thread. You see, she's loyal to that thread. She's playing with that thread. She's, she's following that thread in a sense. And it's the same thing that happens to you when you, make a, uh, you get a phone number, for example. You go out, you have this really good moment. Maybe it's 30 seconds, maybe it's a minute, maybe it's five minutes. And she's really excited. You get the phone number and that emotional thread is really high. But then it dies down and it gets quiet. It gets more still after she leaves. She had a moment. It was only five minutes. It was a little bit of emotion. Then you call her later and it, maybe she remembers that emotion. Oh, that's that nice guy. But in that moment, the emotional thread's somewhere else. She's dealing with something else that's a, of a more important emotion or a bigger emotion or a more powerful emotion. So she sets it aside. But because she's not thinking logically, because she's flowing, she's meeting a lot of guys. A lot of guys are talking to her. She's loyal to the moment. Maybe she doesn't get back to you. Maybe she forgets about it. Maybe she keeps meaning to get back to you, but she just doesn't. Maybe she thinks, oh, he was really nice, but I don't feel it anymore. The emotion's gone. And so she's loyal to that emotion. And uh, here's another good example. Sometimes you're at a bar and a girl's all over you and she starts making out with you and she starts kissing you and, she's in, and, she, and you're like, wow, this is on. And you totally make out with her. And, there's a lot of touching. She's like, oh, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. I remember the first time this happened to me. I was, Definitely call me, call me. We got to hang out. And you're like, okay. So then you text her, you call her and nothing. Again, in that moment, maybe she had a few drinks. She was turned on. The emotional thread was strong. It was powerful. There was this powerful moment going on. But then she gets home and the emotional thread changes again. Suddenly she feels, wow, if I go out with him, He's gonna expect a whole lot more. We did kind of a lot. We were really all over each other. He's gonna probably expect sex right away. And I was kind of drunk and I don't know if I, how much I really like him. It, it was a moment thing. We'll just let it go. We both had fun. And again, that's that emotional thread. I had an old mentor and he gave me an analogy for this. And he said, it's kind of like your favorite car drives up. If you're a car guy, a lot of guys are, maybe you love a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, or there's a certain car that you would just love to drive. Maybe it's a two, three, four hundred thousand dollars sports car. Let's say that car pulls up uh, uh, or drives right by. 
you're going to notice it. You're going to look at it. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to be like, wow, look at that beautiful vehicle. That thing's amazing. But then you're probably going to forget about it. An hour later, two hours later, you're not going to be thinking much about it. You're probably not going to be telling anybody about it the next day or that evening, you know, because it's just not a big deal. But then that car rolls up again the next day. And this time it stops and the guy opens the door and he says, let's go for a ride. And you get to experience a ride of that car. You get to sit in the seat. You get to relax. You get to even let you drive it. You get to feel how that car corners. What's the odds you're going to be thinking about that the next day? What's the odds you're going to be talking about that the next day? These are two different types of emotional threads. Unfortunately, the average guy only creates the first type of emotional thread. And, um, and unfortunately, that doesn't typically work. It doesn't work long term. It doesn't hold her attention. It gets her excited in the moment. He was fun. He was flashy. But the second type of emotional thread is what you need to create to keep a woman interested long term. And that's that where she's invested in you emotionally on a deep level. She's gotten a full visceral experience. And this is where we start to get into depth and rapport and deep emotions and this type of stuff. And this is what creates a long-term connection and the desire for her to call you back. Okay. So let that set for a minute. Not logic. Not because she said this. When she said that that day, that's, she didn't mean it but that was what the emotion was telling her to say. Now the emotion has changed. If you want her to follow through, you have to be good at creating a deeper connection. And that's not done with logic. That's done with feeling. That's done with depth of emotion. You see, when women are loyal to the, the attraction energy, the playful banter, fun, that's fun for them. That's playful. That's the momentary energy. It changes from moment to moment like the wind. So in this moment, she meant this, but next moment she means this and it changes. She likes you. She doesn't like you. She likes you. That's push pull energy, just like in banter. And it can come and it can go really fast. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's a big party girl thing, right? Party girls are all over the place because they're loyal to that energy. They don't want any of the depth. They don't want to really connect with somebody. So they run from that, but they love to play with the push pull. And a lot of guys will tell you, you know, you got to take the party girls in the moment. They may disappear on you. They may reappear later because they're, they're going with the wind and the emotion of the moment. Now, if we go back to this idea of rapport, that's depth, that's feeling. We're not going to get into that today, but I just want you to understand there's a difference. Now, if she's invested, uh, invest in you emotionally and, she, and there's got a deep uh, emotional stories between you two and bonding, now she's going to be more loyal. She might still go up and down with her emotions. You're going to notice that, but she's going to be more loyal to getting back to you um, and being connected to you. What I want to point out for you guys in this is that you guys take this shit way too personally and you take a woman being loyal to her emotions. You're attracted to feminine women and they're going to be all, they're going to be up and down when they're in their feminine. But so you take it way too personal when they don't get back to you right at this moment or right at that moment. Yeah. You got to set boundaries. You got to set rules. And what that does is it creates an emotional response in her, which makes her more loyal to that feeling because she feels your strength as a man. It turns her on. But hey, let's say you just met a girl and you text her and she doesn't get back that day. So what? Wait two days, send another one. And then wait another two days, send another one. You know, she might very well just suddenly pop up and be completely invested again. Let's say you went out and you met her on a date and, uh, and she flirted with you and liked you. And in the moment, she's just, just having fun. But then she also has a boyfriend. She didn't tell you that because she liked you. And then you text her and she doesn't respond because now she's sober and she's like, okay, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> that was fun, but I, I love my boyfriend. And then maybe you text her again, nothing. And then maybe down the road, she breaks up with her boyfriend, but she remembers you because of the emotion you created for her. And then you happen to send another text down the road. Well, then suddenly she's like, hey, how you been? And acts like you two have never been apart. Acts like she, you, you're an old friend. Well, this literally happens. And this shows that loyalty to that emotional moment. A friend of mine, he did an experiment. He was really curious about this with women because he would meet a lot of women that were really attracted to him and then it would disappear on him because he was out all the time. He said he created a spreadsheet and he would contact these women over and over again for six months or a year. I can't remember what it was, but he would wait. He was just doing his experiment. So at first he would send a text every two days and then he'd go to th three or four days and then he'd go to a week. 
after a couple texts and then he'd go to a month and eventually he had him on i think it was like a two week or a month rotation where he just send a random text something playful something fun how you been blah 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 comment and it shocked him because sometimes it would be way down the road three months six months and a girl would suddenly respond like he was an old friend how you been what's up and and they would go out and hang out and she'd be all over him why because it's not that she didn't like him it's that the emotional moment was right and it took a little while and and he just he let go he was free from outcome so he let the women if they want to run off they can run off if they don't they don't i'm playing anyways i'm dating tons of women i'm not worried about it it'd be different if this was my girlfriend and she was doing this it would be different if i was trying to build a relationship with this girl but i'm just looking for girls to play with and have fun with so he just send these texts he said some of these girls did have boyfriends and that's why they didn't respond to me and then suddenly they broke up and then suddenly they were looking to have fun and i would always send these cute texts that would make them smile every couple weeks a month and it just made them think hey i'm gonna get back to this guy and your lack of attachment to outcome, because neither of you owe each other anything at this point. You two haven't dated, you haven't done anything serious, you're in the moment. And so that lack of attachment to outcome is what makes it so powerful, okay? So now let's take Gombina at the bar, flirting. You're at the bar, you're flirting. You just met a girl, you're flirting, you're bantering, you're teasing her. And then you start to tell a story. You start to go down a certain thread, like you're, you're teasing her about this or that. And then her friend interrupts and pulls her this way. That's a strong emotion. Your no, 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 come back here. We were talking about this energy is breaking that emotional flow that she's in in that moment. You actually are killing your game. And uh, if you can hold it without being a dick, that's great. Like if you can ground both of them out, tease both of them, pull her back over, as a way of redirecting the energy, making it flow in the direction you wanna flow, that's gonna be super sexy. But if you're just abruptly get mad, shut off your energy, your connection, and then logically to, you know, try to move it back, that's what most guys do, that's where everything falls apart. So I wanna encourage you to start to go out and watch women communicate emotionally. Watch them work with their flow. Watch them when that group of them are together, watch how they jump from emotion to emotion to emotion. And sometimes their conversation seems illogical, but the more you notice this and learn to ride these waves and start to pick up on the subtleties, like she's talking about something sad right now, or she's excited, let's play with the excitement. Let's play with the sadness and let's pull it back up and let's, let's see if I can steer the emotion somewhere else. That's when you'll really start to understand what playful, fun communication is. You'll start to learn to vibe and you'll start to learn to banter better. You'll start to learn to tease. You gotta be able to see these flows and feel these flows. You actually feel them with your body. I did a video on emotional listening and the better you get at emotional listening, being able to listen and feel these vibrations, these feelings, it's all an emotion is, and it's energy in motion, so it's a vibration. The better you get at feeling these, the better you're gonna get at being able to pick up and adjust in the moment. The less attached you are to the outcome. That doesn't mean you don't want an outcome. You're not choosing an outcome. That's a better way to put it. But the less attached to it you are, the more you can let things go off the rails and steer it back. Let things go off the rails and steer it back. And that's, that's the art of it, is that it's going to go off the rails. That's part of the dance. She's going to test. She's going to push. She's going to pull away. A friend's going to pull her over here. You just relax into it. You adjust and you steer it back. And then you put it right back on track. So what I want you to do is go out and practice seeing this in the world. Go out and just watch feminine people communicate, feminine women. Watch how they flow. Watch how they, they're loyal to the moment. They're feeling the moment. And then suddenly they'll realize, oh, I'm supposed to be here. And then they'll rush off and they'll, they'll be back flowing in that direction. Oh, I'm supposed to be over there. Flow in that direction. They'll get, they'll get wrapped up in a conversation. They'll open up and start expressing whether it's a uh, shy, feminine person or an ex or a big bold feminine person doesn't matter they're all doing it in their own way and then watch logical people communicate how they're f how they're being loyal to a goal to an idea trying to figure it out trying to understand it trying to wrap everything around it that's a different energy so um so there's your assignment for the week hopefully you get this idea it's an abstract concept so it's hard to describe and uh maybe one of these days we'll get a woman in here to talk about it and we'll uh 
and we'll do that. We're starting to create new types of videos. I'm trying to do some walking around out here on the street. I'm gonna start going to more crowded areas, I think. I think maybe we'll bring some women out too and we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. We're gonna be changing things slowly. We're in no rush. We're gonna be adding more and more elements. As you, as you can already see, we've already been doing that with the YouTube channel. So I look forward to bringing you more. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share. And I think that's it for now. Remember, only the confident really live. Take care, have a beautiful day.